I spotted this on eBay quite a while ago and ended up deciding it was worth my while to try and buy it. Uh, it needed some work done to it, uh, quite a bit. It was missing some inlays. Uh, there were a lot of parts that were missing. It needed a new head. Uh, it needed a lot of work. These are pictures from the ad, and I'm showing you here different angles of what the banjo itself looked like, and I thought it looked in really good shape. I really like that that tuner there with the hole in the middle and then the little spindle thing. I've never seen one like that before except on these celebrated banneries, which were made by the Buckbee Company uh, back in the 18, probably mid-1880s, late 1880s to the early 1890s. So this is probably the range that this is. You can see some of the brass fittings are missing. Uh, and I, uh, it arrived, and I was so happy to get it. And then I started collecting parts and things. First, I had to do some fixing here. You can see the rim was splitting a little bit, so I had to add some glue to that, use my little X-Acto knife to separate it, add glue. It was messy. It needed cleaning. Um, they're also right here at this, There's you can see there's a gap on that side, and it was said in the ad that there was a gap and that it was raised on one side, so I used my clamps, filled it full of glue, clamped it up real good to kind of level the fretboard out so that I'd be able to play it a little bit better. And here you can see all the clamps I used to get it back in place, left it set for a couple of days. And here we go, how messy this was to begin with. Had a little bit of corrosion on it, so I decided I'd clean it up using my handy dandy rubbing compound. And here it is, it's cleaned up a little bit nicer now. Now the corrosion is kind of gone. There were still some spots that wouldn't come off, but it looked a lot better than it did to begin with. I took the nails out of the celebrated banner, and there are the nails that were holding it. And when I flipped it over, I looked at it. The number. 59 scratched into the back of it. Same number that's on the inside of the, I think the flip side of this. Yeah, 59 right there. And it's also inside the pot, which I'm currently gluing because some of it was coming loose. A little bit of it was coming loose, so I'm gluing some of that back together. The edge of this was coming off the, the board here, and I glued all that and pressed it back together. And it looks a lot better than it was. It also leveled the, the board out a little bit. It was a little bit high on the side because of that. So it all looks a little bit better taking it slowly a little bit at a time. Here's a good shot of the, uh, the fifth string peg. It's really interesting. And it's the missing pieces. Uh, there's a piece of wood that goes inside that brass piece. The top one is completely missing the brass piece. Here I inserted a reddish piece of wood into the center of that, which it originally had, and then I have to add a, a pearl to it also later. Here's a picture of the side. I had to add a little bit of length to the dowel stick. Here's a good shot of what the head looked like when I got it. Missing the moon and the star. This is what it's supposed to look like. This is a picture of another one, and that's what it's supposed to look like. I decided to add a piece of pearl. I decided I want a face in my moon. So I used that and you can see the clamps that I used to hold it together here. I'm gluing the star in place. There's the moon face, and here I am. There we go. Not bad for a rookie. 
were a lot of low spots, so I used my tight bond original wood glue. I had uh, some ebony min wax to color uh, the glue with a little bit, plus I used an ebony pen and made a whole bunch of ebony dust to mix in with the mixture, and then I slathered it all over the head in the low spots and fill in to fill in the gaps and place on the neck here. And I sanded everything off, uh, leveled it, and then put a, a, po a polished look to it. Here's some of the spots that I uh, filled in on the end. Here they are after I filled them in. Could have done a better job, but they look better than they did. And then one more shot of the, the neck hair. I penciled in the face on the moon, and then eventually I carved it in there and added ink. Also a little design on the star there. More shots. There it is, kind of finished, so you can kind of see the look. Got the pegs back in that I bought. Now this is a, an outlay of a, that I put on top of this brass finger pick, so I could cut out using this knife, a shape similar to that, to fill in, there it is, once I cut it out, so I could fill in the, I used my anvil to hold everything while I was doing the cutting, use that knife, and here's the brass piece that I cut out to fit into that missing inlay there. Here I am clamping it down good, and there it is with the pearl in the middle. I also had to put a piece of wood and then a piece of pearl. Here's what it looked like when I first got it. And here is what one's supposed to look like. This is what it actually looks like. Mine's similar, but not exactly. I kind of turned it into like a, I don't know, a penguin or well, something. Here's the little banjo. It's all finished. I got strings on it. Just needs a bridge. So I got a little bridge. This is temporary. It'll work for now, just so I can see what it sounds like. Be back in a sec. Actually, it was a bit more than a second by the time I got back here. It's a couple of weeks. Here is the headstock with the new inlays. There's a close up of the you know, star, kind of the designs in it. The new, or the tuning keys that I got for it. I had to make a new uh, nut for it, so I had to place that. This came on it, and it's working great. Works real good. Here's the new inlay I had to totally make for this blank spot here. This one actually popped out once. I glued it back in. Then I had to put a little wood around the inside of that, and then a pearl dot in the middle of it. I also put a pearl a vest to the penguin or whatever and that. Uh, these pieces were already here. They were still on, so I didn't have a problem with that. I did have to buy a new 9-inch head. Unfortunately, the 9-inch head is not a com common one, so I ended up paying twice the price that I'd normally pay for a head to get a small one like this. Now, if it had been 8-inch, that was cheap because that's a common one, but the 9 is really uncommon. I had to buy a NP tailpiece for it. Uh, I may eventually buy more hooks and nuts. As you can see, I skipped every other one except for at the end here where I got two. Um, but that's more than enough to make it sound like a banjo. Let's see if I can pick a little bit here for you. <laughs> 